excellent. So I enjoy, I enjoy those videos. The kids in junior school absolutely love them. So I hope they like them in the infant school because they're getting it on Thursday. <laughs> right. So from the Bible, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In the first book, Theophilus, this is Luke writing to Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And we thank God for his word to us. And we hope that the clicker works. So we're thinking about this idea of the presence of Jesus, which makes all the difference, giving us confidence uh, in, in any situation, no matter how difficult or painful or problematic it may be. The Holy Spirit gives us confidence to speak up and to do and to be all that we are in Christ. And so we've got the, we've got the lion and her cub there, and we can see that we can be just like that cub, full of confidence, carefree, and just going for it with Jesus. How do we do that? That's the rest of the, that's the, that's my little 10 minutes for this morning. How do we do it? Well, there's three things in the story, and the first one is one that you've heard me say a lot. Um, and the first one is, while staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promised of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. So waiting, that is the first thing to do. If we're going to be confident because of the presence of Jesus, we've got to wait on the presence of Jesus, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? That's what we need to do. Our relation, waiting is important in terms of our relationship with God. And it's mentioned throughout the Bible. All through, There's loads of Psalms. Um, in Isaiah, he mentions it a few times. And again, a few times here in the New Testament. Now, we all know that I absolutely hate waiting. Because this is a waiting room. That's what I thought I'd use to illustrate that. And I thought, waiting room. I can't stand waiting around. I, actually, I've gotten a lot better as I've gotten older. But uh, I used to be very impatient. And in fact, I was watching a documentary last weekend over the coronation, and the king, the new king, is described as being an impatient man. And the excuse that was given, well, that's how he gets things done. And I wanted to shout at the top of my lungs at the, at the TV screen, so what? Just because it gets things done doesn't mean it's right. Impatience is an awful quality, and we saw it when he first acceded to the throne, didn't we? Um, because he was trying to sign the documents, and he was like, ah, get this out of the way. And I was like, that is a horrible image to have of your new monarch. But that's what he's like. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. That's not what God wants from us. We need to be patient. We've got to wait for the Spirit. So if we're being filled with the Spirit, here's the thing. In the waiting we're changed. We're changed from impatient to patient. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many of you can name the, all nine of the fruit of the Spirit? I hope you can, because that's what we're supposed to be like. That's what the Spirit does as we wait. Love, joy, peace, patience, etc. is developed in us. So we have to wait. And when we wait, we've got confidence. Why is it turning off? Don't turn off. It never turns off. 
But when we wait, we're changed, we're transformed, and we can face all manner of things because of the confidence that the Spirit gives us. So the, third, the second thing is, yeah, if I point it in that direction of the computer, it works. The first is, is don't worry. So verses 6 and 7, um, the, the disciples say, Lord, is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom? And Jesus says, what are you talking about? Don't, don't think about that. That's not your issue. You haven't got to worry about that. Stop worrying about that. That's not your problem. You do what I've told you to do. You crack on with what you need to do. Don't be worrying about what you shouldn't be worrying about. And, you know, our problem is like that. We're the same as the disciples, aren't we? We worry about all these things we're not supposed to be worried about. We worried about all these things, 90% of which won't probably happen at all. Do you notice that? You're worried about something and then it doesn't happen. And you think, why did I worry? Because worrying stupid, isn't it? It's not a good idea to worry. And Jesus says, don't do it. And we worry, about, we worry about things that we don't have any control over. You find yourself doing that? When, when COVID hit, we were all worried. Why were we worried? Could we do anything about that situation? No, but we were all afraid and we were all worried. We shouldn't be worried about it because Jesus is with us. And we're often distracted by lots of different things that aren't real issues. Uh, when we really aren't worried about the things that we should be concerned about, the things that we can do something about, the things that Jesus cares about, doing the things that he did and living the way Jesus lived. We can be confident when we stop worrying about things that we don't need to be worrying about because we know who Jesus is and we know that Jesus is with us and we can do all that he wants us to do. And all those things we worry about, he'll deal with them. He'll worry about them. They're his problem, not ours. So, that's the second thing. We're going to be confident because of the presence of Jesus. We don't need to worry. And then the, th the third thing is um, to receive. Receive. So he says in verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will receive. So instead of the worrying, the disciples needed to just receive the Holy Spirit. Wait for him. And when he gets here, receive him well. And so, this is the way I think about it. Oh, why isn't it moving on? Oh, there we go. You maybe you have to push it quite hard. So, um, we all know when somebody comes to our house, what do you do? Tell them to shove off? No, you don't, do you? You say, come on in, take your shoes off, take their coat, Come on, make yourself comfy. Do you want a cup of tea or coffee or some weird mint tea or some strange other tea from China? I've got all of those if you want them. You know, you make them go. You could have something a bit stronger, a bit of gin and tonic, whatever. We've got it all. You make them comfortable. You receive them well, yes? When somebody comes in, you offer them something to eat, maybe a biscuit or if, if it's for a meal, say, oh, it won't be for a couple of minutes. Have a drink in the meantime. You... It's, you receive somebody well. That's how you receive somebody well. Do you know, it's exactly the same for the Spirit of God in your heart. It's exactly the same. We receive the Spirit of God well in our heart. But here's the thing. You have, to, you have to actually open the door to the Spirit when He knocks and let Him in. If you don't, nothing happens. He's there. He's with you. But unless you let Him in, nothing happens. It's important to receive the Spirit of God well. And welcome him and the power that he gives us. When we do that, when we receive the Spirit, you, you will, as we'll see later on when we read the rest of Acts and get into Acts chapter 2 and the Spirit comes, you'll see that the disciples actually received the Spirit and it made the difference. They were confident. They could do things that they didn't think they could do ever before. And that's the same with us. When, this, when we receive the Spirit well, we can have confidence to do anything that God wants us to do, even if we find it a bit scary and think we're not sure we can do it. So, remember the lion cub and his mother. It's like that when the Spirit of God is with us. The Spirit is with us, giving us power, and the enemy can see that the Spirit is with us. And he's, the, the, the Spirit, God's got eyes like that mother saying, make one wrong move, mister, and you've got it. Our Heavenly Dad knows everything that we need, and He is best placed to provide us, and He empowers us to meet any situation with confidence, no matter what is going on. So, what are you facing today? What am I facing today? Where do we need confidence? 
Can we wait on the Spirit? Can we stop, give our worries to Jesus and let Him have them so we don't worry about them anymore? Will we receive the Holy Spirit and His power? Well, when we do, we will have confidence beyond compare. So, that's the, so just take a moment to let some of that sink in, and I'll pray for us. Father God, we thank You for the, for the, the gift of Your Spirit. We thank You for the promise that Jesus gave. We thank You for the confidence that we can have because You are with us. Father, I pray that when we are worried about things that we don't need to be worrying about, we will give our worries to You. I pray, Father God, that we will wait on You, that we'll simply wait on You, Lord, to receive all the power that You have for us. And I pray, Father, that we will be able to receive Your Holy Spirit well into our hearts and the power that He can give us to be confident to face any situation. Thank You, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good. I want to talk for another 45 minutes, but we don't have time for that, so we won't be doing that. Oh, I just realized we didn't pray for the offering. Let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank You for the money that's been given, uh, both through the bag today and through the bank, that it happens uh, automatically. We thank You for, for the money that's been given, but we also thank You for the people who have given the money. We thank You uh, for Your work in our lives. And at this moment, we dedicate ourselves afresh to You as Your servants in this place. May we be good stewards of Your money, and may it go far and wide to extend the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, David's had a picture. Go for it. Yes, you want to turn on? Yeah. I've just had this picture just come to me, and it was of a, of a river as far as, you could, far as I could see. And all I could see in, those, in the river was words that were worry and things that really troubled people. And, that, and something came to me that God says, nothing is impossible through, through him who strengthens me. And, that, and I thought that was really appropriate for today. And I've, I used to be a warrior, and now I've got Jesus in my life. And I just thank, thank, thank him for sending the Holy Spirit to, to reassure me, like, like that mother with the lion cub. I know that he's behind me watching my steps, so I just thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Bless you. It's a good picture. Give the, excellent. We're going to respond, keep responding as we sing together, stand as we're able.